Hi, Ignite friends. This is Dina Iman. I'm a program manager here at Microsoft, and today I will be taking you on an adventure and telling you how you can build web real-time communication into your Windows native apps using our WinRTC, Windows Real-Time Communication. So let me take you through it. So today, I'll tell you a little bit about the technology, what WebRTC is and what it's used for. I'll tell you the history between WebRTC and Windows and what we're here for, WinRTC. I'll introduce that and I'll show you the architecture diagram and what you can expect from us in the future. And I'll tell you about our customers and how they're using WinRTC. And then we're going to show you a really cool demo that is going to uh, help you understand where we're coming from and where we're going. So let's get into it. So what is WebRTC? So WebRTC is an acronym for Web Real-Time Communication. It's a free open source software backed by industry leaders. And it allows developers to build powerful video, audio, and data communication solution. And believe it or not, it's used on a lot of the things that you probably use on your daily lives. It's used on WhatsApp, uh, Facebook Messenger, Amazon, uh, Skype, it's used on Teams. Uh, if you're using any um, online meetings right now on Teams, that's uh, backend by WebRTC. It's also used on Blackboard and Mixer. And it is a Google code base, and its reference implementation of the standard is in uh, Chrome. So it's used on, the, on Chrome, but also on Edge, iOS, Android, Opera, and Safari. You might be wondering where WebRTC is used, but especially right now in a COVID-19 era, we're seeing WebRTC and real-time communication everywhere in so many industries. It's used in telemedicine, it's used in education. I have my, my siblings using uh, real-time communication, they're connecting with their teacher online, so that's also using WebRTC. It's used in financial services through banks and uh, brokers. It's used in hospitality. Imagine if you have someone picking up your clothes online and showing you instead of going, you physically go into a store, you have real time communication to do that or even a retail. You can have someone do your grocery or um, or show you what 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 you want in the store. So that's using real time communication as well. But some of the other uh, places that we've seen WebRTC is broadcasting. Uh, if you're watching any uh, broadcasting, people are using WebRTC behind the scenes to, to do that. It's used in critical cases like emergency uh, to save someone's life um, through uh, real-time communication. But it's also used in simple things like remote support, screen sharing, or file sharing. All of these are use cases for WebRTC. So how did it all start? We saw web real-time communication possible, but only in a browser on Windows. And we wanted to take that farther. So we saw an opportunity to do much more than that. And from here, we introduced something called the WebRTC UWP. So WebRTC UWP was Microsoft's first attempt to do real-time communication outside the browsers. We wanted our developers to be able to use that real-time communication on modern Windows apps and more than just the browser. So let me tell you a little bit about the history when we did that. So our history with WebRTC and Windows started with a UWP support. And even though it was used by so many of our customers, it was made of 40 different forks from the Google code base. And that made things so complicated to keep up with every Google release that they do. And that's when we, we thought that there was an opportunity for us to work on the next gen and introduce something that makes it so much easier for our developer to do. Here we're introducing WinRTC, Windows Real-Time Communication. It is time to work on the next gen to be able to use that real-time communication outside the browser on so many apps and so many different Windows native apps. So let me show you what WinRTC can do. So what was previously impossible is now easy because we want to delight our developers with the best real-time communication. So WinRTC is now closing the platform gap between Win32 and UWP on Windows. But some of the principles that we wanted to keep in mind when we were building WinRTC is to be compatible. We wanted WinRTC to allow developers to call any WebRTC native API. And we also wanted to keep in mind that key interoperability was super important to us. We wanted to keep that interoperability to cutting edge web browsers. 
But what's most important to us was contributing back all our changes, all, all our changes to Google. So let me walk you through the WinRTC architecture. You see the diagram is kind of split into two parts. The right is the web development platform, and that, that's what existed before WinRTC. And on the left is the Windows native platform. And that's what we are offering, the WinRTC components. So the right side is if you're building a web app or a PWA, that sits on top of a Chrome or a Microsoft itch. And that sits on the Win32 app. And the Win32 app sits on the WebRTC component. And that's what existed before WinRTC. So on the left side, you'll see the Win32 app sits on top of a WinRTC uh, component. And that's what we're offering for real-time communication outside the browser on Windows. And if you're building a UWP app, you kind of have the option to use a XAML control. So it sits on top of the XAML control, or you can use directly the WinRTC component, or you can skip the two and use the WebRTC.org, the UWP uh, compatible component. And if you're uh, building a React native for Windows, you can also use the XAML control and the WinRTC component that we're offering. And next to that, if you're building a .NET uh, app, you can also do uh, two things. You have the option to use the XAML control, or you can skip the XAML control or go directly to the WinRTC component. And if you're using a Mixed Reality SDK, you can um, you can go directly to the WebRTC.org. But all of that on the left, if you look at it, everything that we're offering sits on top of the WebRTC.org. And that's where I'm saying, like, contributing back our changes to Google and be able to be on the same page with them is super important to us. So from here, let me show you who our customers are and how they're using WinRTC and what their scenarios are. Let's get right into it. So our first customer is the Mixed Reality HoloLens 2. And if you're looking through this picture, there is someone wearing a HoloLens on the field and they're calling an expert to be able to help them with the problem that they're facing and having both their hands free to do the job. So under the cover all of that, if they're calling the person, the expert, um, the real-time communication used by that is the WinRTC. And if they're doing any file sharing or if they're um, sharing any documents with that person, that's also using real-time communication. So our next customer is the Microsoft Research Team. They're building an incredible research to be able to help kids on the autism spectrum to use video conferencing in a more comfortable and productive way. Because what, what it means for us is different than what it means for them, and we want to include everyone, including kids on the autism spectrum. So the next thing is that WinRTC is compatible with WinUI. And if you're not familiar what WinUI is, it's a user interface layer that contains modern controls for building Windows apps. And we're currently compatible with WinUI through UWP, but in the future, we're also uh, focusing on bringing uh, compatibility through WPF as well. And if you're wondering why WPF support Research have shown that during COVID-19 pandemic, it made RTC or real-time communication the third largest ask for WPF and when form uh, developers. And when we investigated it a little bit further, it showed that 60 to 70% of WPF developers are, are building enterprise apps. And because of everything happening right now and everything that we're experiencing, uh, made real-time communication super important for all the industries and everything that we're dealing with. We in the future are focusing on bringing WPF support to WinRTC as well. So the next customer is Project Reunion and it's a Microsoft open source project that makes it so much easier to build a great Windows apps. And it provides a unified platform for new and existing Win32 and UWP apps. So in the future, you can expect to be able to use WinRTC or uh, Win uh, real-time communication with uh, Project Reunion. So before I can show you the demo, I want to emphasize that we really want to hear from you. 
I'm Dina Ayman and I want to hear from you. I want to see your feedback. If there is anything that we can work on, the Winner TC team want to make it easier for your use cases. If there's anything that you want us to consider, uh, any issues, I'll give you a couple ideas on how to, you can connect with us. But please feel free to connect if we can do anything to make it better for you. So some of the ways that you can connect with us is through GitHub. We're actively looking at the issues that you file. If you have any issue that you want us to look at, please file an issue. Uh, you can directly connect with us on LinkedIn. Um, myself or Vikram Dama is the engineering lead or uh, Yui is the uh, software engineer working on WinRTC. If you shoot us a message, please feel free. Or you can also email us. So I'm going to leave the Microsoft emails uh, for you to feel free to do that. So any way that you can connect with us, if we can make anything better for you, please um, reach out anytime. So let me introduce the team. Uh, I'm Dina Ayman. I'm on the program management for WinRTC. The software engineering side, we have Vikram as the engineering lead and Yui as the software engineer um, on the, the software engineering side. And for data and intelligence. We have Lister is the lead for DNI. Uh, we have Jeremy and Lillian, and we all really want to, um, to connect with you. So here is our emails. If you want to shoot us an email, if that's easier for you, please feel free to do so. And with that, I'm going to conclude it and leave you with the demo uh, that Augusto made. Thanks, Augusto, for doing that. Thanks, Dina. Hi, I'm Augusto Rigetto. Today, I'm going to show you how to add real-time communications capabilities to your Windows native apps. I'm going to start to give you a brief introduction of WebRTC. Then I'm going to talk about how to use WinRTC to improve your productivity by adding a Zemo component to your UWP app. After that, I'm going to show you how to change the Zemo component code for improving the camera resolution. Finally, I'm going to talk about the next steps for WinRTC. Let's get started. WebRTC is an overloaded term. It can refer to a set of JavaScript APIs defined by W3C to allow media to be sent and received by another web browser or device implementing the appropriate set of real-time protocols. It was developed in conjunction with an IETF group that resulted in a set of RFCs. W3C also published another set of APIs for allowing JavaScript apps to access local media devices. WebRTC also can refer to the open source code used as a reference implementation and shipped inside web browsers like Edge and Chrome. WinRTC is based upon the WebRTC reference implementation. Interoperability is one of the good outcomes of all these specs. There are specs about which codec should be supported and how network traversal should work. WebRTC is a peer-to-peer -peer technology that allows applications built on top of WebRTC to scale very well. But if WebRTC is a peer-to-peer -peer technology, how does one peer find another? Let's say Alice wants to talk to Bob. WebRTC spec doesn't define how Alice will find Bob. That means that Alice and Bob will have to find another way to coordinate the communication. One of the possible solutions is a signaling server. Bob and Alice connect to a signaling server and then start doing the peer-to-peer -peer communication. But what if Bob and Alice are behind two different firewalls? In that case, Bob and Alice will have to use a stand server to figure it out what are their public IP addresses. After that, they might need to use a relay server to relay the communication. This sequence diagram shows the 72 steps required to establish a simple connection between two peers. I'm going to be using the rest of this presentation to show you how to implement the 72 steps. Nah, it's a short presentation. I don't have time for that. There must be a better way. Let's use WinRTC to improve your productivity. You will find the code for this demo and other sample code in our GitHub repo. In this demo, I'm going to build a UWP app with real-time communication capabilities from scratch. Let's get started. Let's open Visual Studio 2019 and create a new project. Let's create a blank app for C++ WinRT projection. That one, it's for UWP. 
let's name it my first WinRTC. Let's open the new get package manager. Here we have I'm changing to WinRTC because the new get packages are not public yet. Once they are become public, you are going to, going to be able to find the new get as any other new get package. Here you can see the NuGet package is correspondent to the layers in the architecture diagram. This is the NuGet package containing the reference implementation that's a C++ code. This is a NuGet package containing a WinRT projections for reference implementation. And this NuGet package contains a demo component that uses FRTC as signaling server. Let's install the, the new Decimal component. Now let's open the Decimal file. And let's add the namespace for the WinRTC Decimal component. Microsoft WinRTC Simple Video Conferencing. Now let's remove these components that this project template is created for us. And now let's replace that 72 steps with a single line of code. That's it. The demo components done. Now let's add the header file that will be used for building that demo component. This application will need access to webcam and microphone, also to internet connection as a server, because a peer-to-peer -peer application. So let's add permissions to the UWP to the app manifest. So let's open the app manifest, go to capabilities. Select Internet Client and Server, Webcam, and Microphone. That's it. Let's close the app manifest. Now let's look, remove this, this code that was created by the project template. Now we just, we just need to build. And the magic of addition will save you lots of minutes. After building, let's deploy the application to your machine and open Windows settings. Let's go to the private settings and, give, and allow the app to access the webcam and the microphone. And now let's start the buggy. We just built a video conferencing application. You are going to see on the right side of your screen the output of the app that you just wrote. On the left side of your screen, you are going to see the output of my laptop here running the Edge web browser. So let's do it. Okay, the app has been launched and now it's waiting for someone else to connect to this video conference. So the room ID that was registered in AppRTC is this number here. So let's go over my laptop and see and enter this, this room number here. And AppR.TC. And let's type that in room number 16, 33, 02, 99, 77. And 
jump. So over here. And we have it. Hello. Hello, WinRTC. Let's close everything. Oh, wait. What's this? Why the resolution is so bad? Oh, I know why. Poor camera settings is the reason of why the laptop image was so blocky. Unfortunately, the simple Zemo control doesn't have an AUI for changing the camera settings. Since the code for building the Zemo control is in GitHub, let's hard code another resolution to see if it improves the image sent to the laptop. First, let's remove the new get package that we added in the first demo. Okay, and install. Now let's open the code that generated that NuGet package. Okay, now let's add in a, a reference to the, to the project that we built. The app that we built now is using the code from GitHub. Now let's find the code in the Zemo component that initializes the, the camera. So here, as you can see, so let's debug this code. This is the code that initializes the camera. Okay, so we can see that we have the camera capability here. The debugger says that the resolution is 640 by 480. That's quite low resolution. Let's change that. Let's stop debugging. And let's create a capability called requested capability and another one named resulting capability. So now let's define the, what we want for as a requested capability. Let's say the width is 1920, height is 1080, and we want 30 frames per second. Now let's say, uh, Let's call the API get best match the capability for the camera ID that we already have. With the let's pass the requested capability and you're going to get the resulting capability back. And let's use the resulting capability for when we start the cap uh, capturing. Okay, so let's start the bug and keep the breakpoint over there. As you can see, the resulting capability now has 1920 by 1080. And now let's see the image quality improved. Okay, let's see if our change improved the resolution. So let's pop over the room ID to the FRTC running on the web browser. So it's 16, 0936, 7702. And, yep, much better now. Hello, WinRTC. Bye-bye. Okay, now let's talk about the next steps for WinRTC. We want to make WinRTC even better. Most of the devices these days have silicon specialized for encoding the coding video. So we want to leverage that silicon for improving power efficiency. Another area that investment we want to focus is improving engineering excellence. So we want to have CICD, tests, and all that good stuff. We are also working on improvements for the WinRT abstraction layer and beefing up the Zemo controls. We also want to have small binaries that can be shipped on devices that this binary size matters. And we also want to have more controls for 
other signaling providers. We also want to have examples and documentation for other platforms like Win32.net, React Native for Windows. And finally, we want to contribute our changes back upstream. But we cannot do this alone. So feel free to join us on our GitHub repo. And thanks for watching.